Okay ladies, so just as we did a little video here for cellular respiration, I'm going to try to do a little video for photosynthesis as well. This one's a little bit harder to put in this kind of format, but I think we can still review it pretty well this way. So this is photosynthesis. Got to use green, of course, for this. And remember, the photosynthesis had, had basically two parts. We had the light reactions, and we've got the Calvin cycle. Remember, light reactions, we are going to take sunlight and convert it into chemical energy in the form of ATP and NADPH. Then we're going to use that chemical energy to go to the Calvin cycle and turn CO2 into carbohydrates. And remember, this is a synthesis reaction, right? photosynthesis, an anabolic process where we are, our ultimate goal is to build up something. Versus respiration, where our ultimate goal was to break down sugars in a catabolic process to form uh, uh, ATP, or free energy, for our cell. So let's start by taking a look at the light reactions, which is going to involve almost drawing a little picture more than it involves um, showing you a chemical set of stages. So we start with the light reactions when we talk about photosynthesis. And so obviously that is going to involve some light. Right? So we're going we're gonna to draw the sun here to start with. And the sunlight is going to come into that plant um, it is going to uh, uh, be taken in by the leaves, moved into the chloroplast, right? And inside the chloroplast, you have a stroma, and you have the thylakoid bags in there, surrounded by thylakoid membranes. And inside those thylakoid bags, you're going to find the pigments, right? We've got chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B, we've got some accessory carotenoids. Now, the chlorophyll pigments are set up in these little antenna arrays, Right, little groupings that we called photosystems. And at the center of those photosystems is what we call a reaction center, which is two special chlorophyll A molecules. Now in this first photosystem, we call the reaction center the P680 reaction center. And we call the first photosystem, photosystem 2. So remember that that's not what you would expect it to be, but photosystem 2 is actually the first one. Now, as the solar energy is brought into and passed from chlorophyll to chlorophyll here, we're going to excite electrons. And those electrons are going to move into a higher energy orbital, and when they get to that highest energy state, they're going to leave the reaction center, P680, and they're going to be passed down an electron transport chain, which is very much like the electron transport chain that we saw in cellular respiration. Now, once those electrons get passed down the electron transport chain, I'll kind of draw them coming down here, they are going to move on to the second photosystem, which is also oh appropriately named photosystem one. I don't know if my sarcasm is coming through here or not, but the second one is photosystem 1. And the reaction center for photosystem 1 we call P700. So remember, this is still a photosystem. So it will be absorbing sunlight energy. Um, it will be exciting electrons itself. And uh, once it gets electrons in the reaction center to their highest energy state, those electrons will be passed on to um, a molecule called ferredoxin. I'm going to abbreviate here F-E, or F-E-R, but that's ferredoxin. And ferredoxin is able to pass the electrons on to NADP+, forming NADPH, our um, electron carrier for photosynthesis. Now, this all happens with the help of an enzyme called NADP plus reductase. And there you go, though. There's our first form of chemical energy that comes from the light reactions. 
But don't forget, we've got to form some ATP here too. And we do that via chemiosmosis in a very similar system that we saw in cellular respiration. So in this electron transport chain, just like we saw in the electron transport chain of respiration, we're going to pass hydrogens across the membrane, and they're going to travel back across the membrane via the ATP synthase enzyme, which is able to produce ATP. Now if you need a little bit better and more detailed review of how that process all works, you can check out the cellular respiration video or just go back and check out your notes. Um, but this again is just passing electrons which powers the pumping of the H+, which moves back through ATP synthase and forms ATP. So now we have two forms of chemical energy from the light reactions that can be passed onto the Calvin cycle. So we'll take a look at the Calvin cycle next. Okay, so the Calvin cycle is much more of a chemical process, kind of like respiration was, than the light reactions. And the Calvin cycle involved three steps. We had carbon fixation to start with. It's a simple one-step reaction. We have the reduction of the molecule, second. And then third, we have regeneration. Remember, this is a cycle, kind of like the Krebs cycle, so we need to be able to regenerate whatever we start with so we can keep doing this over and over again. So, step one, carbon fixation, involves taking carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and fixing it to a molecule called ribulose bisphosphate, or RUBP, and that's a five-carbon molecule. Now, this reaction, this fixation reaction, is assisted by what we said was probably the most prevalent enzyme uh, in our planet, which is called Rubisco. Not to be confused with the makers of Oreos, right? So Rubisco. And this carbon fixation process generates a six-carbon molecule that we're not going to even waste time naming, because that six-carbon molecule is so unstable that it almost immediately breaks down into two three-carbon molecules called phosphoglycerates, or um, we often abbreviate that PGA. So phosphoglycerates come from uh, the, uh, the breakdown of this unstable six-carbon molecule. Now, the reduction phase of this actually is, is two steps. In the reduction phase, so let me put a little two here, and so in the reduction phase, we are going to take each of these phosphoglycerates and do two things. First, we're going to convert it into something called 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. So I'm going to abbreviate that one, 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. And in order to do that, we're going to need ATP. So we're going to take ATP from the light reactions, okay, use it here, which turns it back into ADP, which can then go back to the light reactions to kind of start things over on that front. Now, the second step of reduction involves converting 1,3-bis-phosphoglycerate into glyceraldehyde-3-phosphate, G3P, which should look familiar. Um, we saw this during glycolysis before, and so it's an intermediate in both of these metabolic processes. So we're going to form this G3P here, and, and that's our carbohydrate. That's the carb that this plant is attempting to generate. Now in order to do that, we're going to need NADPH from the light reactions. So that's going to come in, and that's going to convert that back into NADP+, which can go on then back to the light reactions and start things over again on that front. Now here's where it gets a little bit tricky. Right? We actually only look at this for every three carbon dioxides. So three turns of this whole process, one carbon dioxide at a time, will eventually produce six G3Ps. But here's kind of the, the rough part for a plant. Five out of those six G3Ps that it makes 
are actually going to be used to regenerate our UBP. So this is step three, the regeneration. Now fortunately, the other one of those six that we use, we are able to actually send to the cell for usage. So whether this gives you, um, you know, we have the plant its energy, or it turns into our energy when we eat the plant, um, only one out of every six G3Ps are used for energy. The other five are used to regenerate actually um, a couple of those ribulose bisphosphate molecules so that we can do this whole thing over again. Now, we're still missing one important thing here. Remember, in the overall reaction of photosynthesis, we have water as a reactant and oxygen as a product. And I haven't mentioned either one of those things yet. So let's take a look at where water is involved by going back to the light reactions and seeing the role that it plays. Okay, so far we had the light reactions, which involved taking sunlight and converting it into the chemical energy of ATP and NADPH. And we had the Calvin cycle, which involved taking carbon dioxide and turning it into uh, carbohydrates for the plant. But as we all know, and we've seen probably in the reaction before, a, a plant needs sunlight and a plant needs water. And as we were all taught in third grade, a plant gives us oxygen to breathe. So where do these things come in? Now let's go back to the light reactions. And remember, you had two reaction centers. You had P680, you had P700. We saw sunlight come to this reaction center, and that excited a couple of electrons that got all fired up. And then they moved down the electron transport chain to P700, and they got excited again and all fired up. And then they went to ferredoxin, and they went on to make NADPH. Right? But here's the problem. These electrons are now gone. Right? They left P680. They moved down the electron transport chain to this other photosystem. They left that one too, and now they've gone on to NADPH, leaving this P680 with no electrons, which is not good. So here's where water comes in. A plant is able to take water and split it, is what we say. So it can take water and turn it into oxygen, and some protons and electrons. So look at that. We were able to form the oxygen that's given off as a byproduct, luckily for us, and we're able to take electrons and feed them back into the photosystems so that we can keep doing the light reactions over time. And what that means is that this plant and this photosystem is much happier if we give it a source of water to give it a source of electrons. So that wraps up photosynthesis. We have our light reactions, we have our Calvin cycle. Probably maybe not as complex as cellular respiration, but still has its tough points in its own right. So I hope that this review helps you understand photosynthesis, um, and I hope that everything is going well so that you'll be well prepared for this upcoming exam. Good luck!